about the future. You see, the Buddha at one time announces a future Buddha, who is called the Maitreya. And, you know, for, for many practicing Buddhists of the devotional type in later generations, this will become decentered. You see, they are living in expectation of the Maitreya. Once in a while in Buddhist societies, somebody gets up to say, I am the Maitreya. Just like in Christianity, there's every century or so somebody says, oh, I am the returned Christ. Well, here you have the Maitreya. Like, for instance, the um, Ming Dynasty in China was the result of a revolt against the preceding Mongol Dynasty by a group of Buddhists led by an ex-monk who was considered to be the Maitreya. Now, okay, so this Maitreya is quite a central figure in Buddhism. It's, of course, also a bit of a problem for all those who think that the Buddha was very rational and so on. No, you find in the life of the Buddha miracle stories and so on. And so also these predictions, like this prediction of the Maitreya. Now, what does he say about the Maitreya? The Maitreya is going to be born in a Brahmin family. He is of good birth. So that's entirely consistent with his view that Buddhas should be not just anyone, they should be upper class persons. And this was also understood like that by the, his own generation. When he died, he was cremated like uh, all Hindus or most Hindus. And um, then there were eight different cities that laid claim on his ashes. So ultimately, the ashes were divided. Each claimant was given a, a bit. But the interesting thing is the argument they use. You see, they say, okay, we are Kshatriyas, and he was a Kshatriya, so we are entitled to his ashes. So the fact that people remain castes even after 30 Five, no, 45 years of Buddhism in existence that supposedly militated against casteism, that is still humanly understandable. You know, there you can say, oh, the master was very big, he understood, but his pupils didn't understand. That, that typical formula could be applied here. But you see, in that case, they might have thought in secret, oh, yeah, our caste is great and is the same caste as his and so on. But they wouldn't have said it publicly. They would have used some other argument to cover up what was really their concern. And yet, you see, after all these years of Buddhism, in full view, very explicitly, in a Buddhist context par excellence, namely the the possession of the ashes of the Buddha himself, they say publicly, oh, it's because we are Kshatriyas. It's because of our caste. So again, you see, it is very unlikely that um, he was going beyond caste. And it is very unlikely that the word Arya had already made the transition from a sociological term to purely a moral term, you know, it's 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 an evolution that has existed. You also see it in English. The word noble, nobility, originally refers to the upper class, to the earls and dukes, and so on. And later, it got the more general, characterial meaning, psychological meaning of magnanimous, dutiful, and so on. So that evolution took place in Sanskrit as well, but. At the time of the Buddha, we were not yet that far. The, the word Arya still had its older uh, sociological meaning of upper class.